I've just gotten back from the gym and I am going to start planning my dress rehearsal for Thanksgiving dinner. It's going to attempt to be a 12 course fully vegan Thanksgiving meal with basically all of my favorite things. You know how like when it's Thanksgiving day and you create that plate and you just like add all the things from the Thanksgiving bounty. I want that plate to look and taste exactly how I remember Thanksgiving being when I was a little girl. Cross my fingers. Feels like fall. <laughs> this is my Lulu, New York Times best-selling cookbook author, Joanne I'm gonna start by making the dough for the bread because it needs to proof in the refrigerator for up to four hours. I'm also going to soak the mung beans for my mung bean pancakes, which is pindetok in Korean. It's always smart to start out with the things that require a lot of passive time. So this bread actually calls for an enriched dough. An enriched dough means that it's gonna have a lot of fat and this is Thanksgiving after all. So we're going to be adding some flour as well as yeast and sugar. But in addition to those things, we're gonna be adding my egg substitute, which is aquafaba plus silken tofu, as well as butter. Here's the trick to knowing when your dough is ready. Take a tiny little piece and stretch it while holding it up to the light. If you can see the light through the dough, it's ready. I'm now going to start the pie crust for my no-bake cheesecake pie. It isn't technically no-bake because I'm baking the crust here, but I actually discovered you can find a vegan graham cracker pre-made crust at most grocery stores. It's made by Keebler. If you do have the time, this Biscoff pie crust though tastes so much better. If you've done Thanksgiving before, then you know that there is a lot of roasting involved. I'm going to be roasting some cauliflower, some red bell pepper for a cauliflower soup, along with some onions and Brussels sprout for the Brussels sprout side dish. As you can see, I've thrown in some garlic cloves with the peels still on. This is one of my favorite hacks. You don't need to peel them. They'll pop right off after they come out of the oven. As you can see, I've been adding fresh thyme and I will be adding fresh sage and rosemary to almost every dish. I honestly believe that it's the addition of these fresh herbs that's going to make my plate extra Thanksgiving-y. This cheesecake pie is really a take on a dish right out of my Thanksgiving childhood. It was my little brother's best friend's mom's recipe, and it was always so good that we would ask her to make like 10 of them for us, <laughs> one for each person. I believe that Brussels sprouts have a bad reputation because most people don't know how to cook them. My Wesungmo, who is literally the best cook in our family, she was very unfamiliar with Brussels sprouts, so the first time she made them, she just boiled them and she literally thought they were the most disgusting things ever. Oh. 
My Thanksgivings growing up were often a mix of both American and Korean flavors, which is why I'm adding tinjang to this cauliflower soup. Tinjang is fermented soybean paste. It tastes like a strong version of miso. My uncle on my mother's side, he really can't stand American food. So every single holiday where we have a family dinner, whether it's Thanksgiving or Christmas or something else, he must have kimchi jjigae. Well, this is my kimchi mac and cheese, the preparation of which will actually remind you a lot of kimchi jjigae, except of course we're adding cashews and a few other more American type ingredients to make a kimchi cheese sauce. Oh my god, this is so good. Remember those mung beans that we were soaking at the very beginning of the day? Well, we're now going to prep the ingredients that are gonna go in the pancakes, some mushrooms and scallions. We're gonna soak them in a little bit of soy sauce and sesame oil so they're full of flavor when it's time to actually fry the pancakes. We're also gonna add some mung bean sprouts to our mung bean pancakes. I think that makes total sense, right? One of my favorite dishes before going vegan and a dish that was pretty much guaranteed at every major holiday and birthday was of course karbi or Korean barbecue short ribs. Obviously I do not eat short ribs anymore, but I'm always looking for ways that I can capture the same flavor and or texture by using vegetables. So let me tell you a funny story. You probably have noticed that tattoo right there on my left shoulder blade. I actually had my mother design that tattoo by tricking her. My mom was very, very against me getting tattoos. And one day I asked her, hey, Oma, can you create some art for my new office at the law firm? And of course she was so proud to display her art in my very new office at the law firm. So she designed me four different designs, her own calligraphy. And I took my favorite one to a tattoo artist artist and had it tattooed on my left shoulder blade and after that even though she hated the fact that I got a tattoo she was still so proud that my very first tattoo was something that she designed it also happens to be the Chinese calligraphy for my family name I don't know if any of you have hosted lots of dinner parties before or even hosted your own Thanksgiving dinner or holiday dinner, but I'd be curious to hear from you. What do you think when one of your guests has a dietary restriction like veganism or gluten-free or some other food allergy? Do you go out of your way to accommodate all of them? 
I feel like I have two different answers depending on the perspective. If I'm the host, absolutely, I will do everything I can to accommodate even just one of my guests, even if it means I have to make a gluten-free, vegan, raw, paleo dish. But on the other hand, if I'm the guest, I feel like a little bit selfish if I make the host like completely disrupt her plans for the dinner just for me. I feel like in that situation, I would rather just offer to bring my own dish, one that I'd be happy to share with everyone else, partly because I don't want the host to feel like she's losing her mind because she doesn't know how to make a vegan dish, and also because I know my vegan food will taste better. tell you about the one time that my veganism got me into a huge fight with my family members to the point that it made me cry and it was around Thanksgiving. For the first time in my entire life, I wanted to host Thanksgiving at my house. We usually have it at my mother's house or at my aunt's house, and I thought, well, oh, I'd love to really host Thanksgiving this year. My one stipulation, of course, was that it be an entirely vegan or at the very least entirely vegetarian meal. Certain members of my family accused me of being extremely selfish and also suggested that the only reason I was even vegan was because my husband made me. I don't think I minded so much that people called me selfish. I understood that to a point, although I disagreed. I think what really hurt me was the fact that my integrity was being questioned. Here I'd created an entire blog, I had written a cookbook called The Korean Vegan, and the suggestion that I was only doing that out of fear for my husband was really sort of awful. So of course I called my mom, and I started sobbing on the phone. You know, my mom was so great. She told me, Joanne, of course we support you. And by we, she was including every single family member who was being mean to me. And my mom's the matriarch of the family, so she has that sort of authority. And she was like, we support you 100%. And we also understand that this has nothing to do with your husband and that this is your decision. In the end, we had a beautiful Thanksgiving dinner at my home and it was such a hit that everyone came back for Christmas for another vegan delicious Christmas dinner. So do you guys call stuffing stuffing or dressing? I've actually started calling it dressing since obviously I don't stuff it in anything. I had a friend who's grown up and lived in Europe her whole life and I asked her whether she'd ever tried stuffing and she's like, what is stuffing? Wait, isn't that the thing that you stuff inside of a turkey? That's gross as fuck. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's so funny. So this mold that I made out of tofu potato starch and better than bouillon, no chicken flavor, it's really my attempt to create something that looks a lot like and even tastes a lot like roast turkey. One of the tricks is to use rice paper over the top of your tofu in order to create a little bit of that skin texture, if you will, and it works really well.
Okay, here's my roast tofu. Yes, you can tell I burnt it on the top because I got super impatient and I jacked up the temperature. Don't do that. Just leave it at a 400 degrees Fahrenheit. But isn't it so cool how it cuts and looks just like turkey? <laughs> Amazingly, I was able to successfully complete all 12 dishes for my Thanksgiving dress rehearsal. The moment of truth will be whether or not that plate that I create for myself out of all these dishes actually tastes like Thanksgiving. As I put together my Thanksgiving plate, I'll leave you with one final thought. This morning, I was asking myself, what am I grateful for this Thanksgiving? And just as I was thinking that, somebody posted on their Instagram stories a video clip from their Friendsgiving dinner. And guess what? Everything that they made was out of my cookbook. They made pechu kimchi, cucumber kimchi, and even sundubu jjigae. When I was growing up, nobody had Korean food except for us on Thanksgiving. But now, there are people all over the world who are eating Korean food for their Thanksgiving dinners. And for that, I am extremely grateful. Whether you're vegan, vegetarian, or cooking for your vegan vegetarian friends, or simply plant curious, I hope you're able to find some inspiration from this 12-course Thanksgiving dress rehearsal meal. I can tell you for a fact, when I tried my Thanksgiving plate, oh yeah, it reminded me exactly of all the Thanksgivings I'd grown up with. <laughs>